everybody's here. And I have my coffee. And Monique has her coffee. So uh, let's get started. Adam, do you mind passing out the agenda? For sure. Everybody? Here you go. Okay, first up is a discussion of the budget, including the LCAP, wages, particularly the minimum wage discussion and benefits, and then the new employee orientation, and finally the strategy and roles we'll play at the negotiating table. Great. So let's first talk about the LCAP meetings, the local control accountability plan that each of us has attended. CSEA members are some of the people who get to voice their ideas and input on how the LCFF is distributed and spent. LCFF? The LCFF is the K-12 funding. It's divided into the base grant, which is the average daily attendance, and then the supplemental and concentration grants. And the California State Board of Education has established eight priorities that the LCAP must address. And CSEA has the right to have a meaningful conversation with the district about LCFF. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So Neva, what's the progress on the budget analysis? Well, we have a really good shot at most of it. Our labor rep, Ian Bates, he gave me the information that headquarters collected. What information? Well, the field office asked for a budget analysis from CSEA headquarters. Um, we got the form and our labor rep filled it out and along with the letter that he wrote, he sent it to the district to request the budget information. And the district is duty bound to respond and that's exactly what they did. They sent the information off to Ian and then Ian sent it off to headquarters. Right, and then the folks at headquarters analyze those numbers and the information and they send that to Ian and then he forwarded it to us. And that's how we prepare to go into negotiations with the district. So here's the packet. And the analysis shows that the district continues to include the confidential classified management and the supervisory in our 1%. But these documents are identical. Well, not quite. CSEA gives us one document with all the comments and it lists what the district is and is not doing. And the second document? The second document is clean. So there's no comments at all. That's the copy that we give to the district. Great, so let's take a look and start strategizing. Good job, everyone. You all did your homework and it's going to pay off. So next on the agenda is the new employee orientation. During the last rounds of negotiations, we were able to negotiate the NEOs into our contracts. Right, and now our service fee payer count is really low. And what is that percentage now, Thomas? Uh, we reduced SFPs from 12% to 3%. Wow. Excellent. When I was hired, I didn't know I had a union. No one told me for about a year. And then someone said, if you join CSEA, you have value, a voice, and a vote. That's all it took. Now I know the power of strength in numbers. And so does the district. It also makes it tougher for them to divide and conquer. We want to make sure that we are also monitoring our SFPs and new members as they go through the orientation process. Right now, our contract language is vague, and it says that we may participate in those meetings. We need to strengthen that language to ensure that we shall participate in the new employee orientation meetings. So next on the agenda is the overall strategy and the roles that each of us will play at the table. This is so cool. I'm going to give them hell. I love your enthusiasm, Monique. But we let the facts speak for us. And because we have the facts on our side. We don't have to give them hell. Just a piece of my mind? <laughs> Just the facts. So let's talk roles. Monique, your role is to... Keep quiet? <laughs> and welcome everyone. Good morning. I see we have a few new faces on the negotiating team, so maybe at this time we should uh, do some introductions. As most of you know, I am Jennifer Herring. I'm the district's attorney. I'm Terry Haas, assistant superintendent. Good morning, Letitia Fox, chief financial officer. 
And I'm Art Segrist, Director of Human Resource and Training. My name is Troy Johnson, and I'm an Administrative Assistant in the District, and I'm also the Chair of the Negotiations Team. I'm Thomas Hagel, and I'm a bus driver for the District. I'm Monique Yang, and I'm my Instructional Assistant, and I'm new to this Negotiation Team. And I'm Neva Rowden with Food Services. Good morning, I'm Adam McQueen, I'm a custodian with the District. Ian Bates, CSA Labor Relations Representative. Well, welcome all. As you know, we're here to discuss health and welfare benefits as well as salary today. We have prepared a financial statement that we would like to go over with you. At this time, I'd like Ms. Fox to go ahead and present that, Ms. Fox. Thank you, Jennifer. I'd be glad to. I think it's important that you understand that every year we try to get a balanced budget and this year isn't any different. The board and the superintendent have given me specific instructions to make sure that we have a balanced budget and adequate reserves at the end of the year to guarantee that we will be able to provide adequate services for our students because our students are what this institution is all about. Now with that being said, I'd like to point out a couple of things. As you requested, a cost of a 1% salary increase is $750,000. So that's the number we've calculated for a 1% increase to salaries and benefits. Excuse me, Ms. Fox, I need to clarify something here. As you're aware, CSEA requested the budget information from the district, and our figures show that the cost of a 1% increase is only $600,000. It's not $750,000 because you keep forgetting to take out the confidential, the classified management, and the supervisors. And you've been doing this for years. CSEA has done a budget analysis, and we'd like to share that information with you to show the figures that we have stated. Well, I appreciate your comments, but I have no idea where you're getting these, these numbers from. And frankly, Ms. Fox is good at her job. She's thorough. I'm gonna have to trust what she says, and we're gonna use her budget. Well, these numbers are actually the ones that Ms. Fox provided to CSEA. We sent these numbers to CSEA headquarters in San Jose. We asked them to do a budget analysis, and here are the results of that analysis. Okay, thank you. I don't know what methodology your expert is using to do this budget analysis, but at this time, I'll stand by our numbers. I've spent a considerable amount of time planning, analyzing, and reviewing these numbers, and I believe ours are accurate. Now let me get back to the points of the budget, and that is the average daily attendance is where we generate our income, and this is how we operate and operate in the black. Well, unfortunately, our average daily attendance is declining along with our declining enrollment, and we anticipate this trend to continue, and this will create a direct impact on our fiscal budget. Based on the LCFF, we have to maintain certain funds to show that we are servicing unduplicated pupils. For example, our low income, foster youth, and English learners. And this is in proportion to the funds that they generate. Then, because we're not gonna have as much income as we anticipate, we'll probably have to dip into our reserves, and the district is not gonna risk going lower than 3%. And as you may know, this is the education code minimum, not the maximum. We'll probably end up making us uh, result in a lower ending balance for the year. So that's basically, in a nutshell, the status of our budget this year. We'd like to be healthier than we are. And I know the union thinks that we're rolling in the dough, but we're not. We would like to be, but we're not. Ms. Fox, I understand what you're saying, but you have constantly underestimated your ADA count, your revenues, and you've been constantly showing or telling us about the decreases in your reserves that you have to keep a certain level, but you're showing $3 million over in reserves. Also, as you can see from the budget analysis report that we gave you, you are showing $2 million in books and supplies, when last year you only utilized $250,000 in books and supplies. The previous years were a similar figure. We also noticed $1 million in conferences. This is much higher than what was actually utilized. Additionally, if you are looking at cuts, the district should not be sending administrators to conferences in Las Vegas and Hawaii. That is a completely inappropriate use of funding. 
I would like to point out a couple of things. 1% salary increase would be $750,000. And I'd have to have a little conversation with the superintendent as to why we agreed to that, and that is not going to help us. Again, I must say that the budget analysis that we provided to you came from your unaudited actuals. And once again, you did not back out the confidentials, the classified managers, and the supervisors. And CSEA has done our homework, and we have noticed that the actual numbers are $600,000. You know, we haven't really had a chance to fully review your proposal, but I can tell you right now, we just can't afford it. I mean, it's way too expensive. Neva, you can roll your eyes all you want, but I'm telling you, it's just way too expensive. And I would really, really hate as the HR director to lose any of our valuable classified employees. And you know, Monique, as the least senior of our classified employees, I'd really hate to lose you. Let me be perfectly clear. CSEA is not going to provide this district with a proposal that's going to result in layoffs of classified staff. You can be assured of that. So we're apart on the money, and I'll tell you why we're apart on the money. It's because the district has a different set of assumptions than CSEA. Your revenues are understated, not overstated. In addition, you claim that 1% for CSEA is $750,000. Actually, it is $600,000 because you forgot to back out classified management, supervisors, and confidentials. We need to back up and start there first because we have given you a proposal that you can afford, that does not result in layoffs, and that's within the budget the board has given you. We have the numbers we can agree on. The numbers that Ms. Fox presented here today, we would be happy to agree with right now. It's your opinion that the district can fund your proposal. We don't agree with that. As Ms. Fox pointed out earlier, we have to be fiscally responsible. We have a limited amount of funds and several other unions we need to deal with, not just CSEA. In order to meet your needs, we would have to look at layoffs. Is that what you want us to do? We'd be happy to accommodate it. Furthermore, we need to deal with the rising cost of fuel. Winter is coming, we need to heat the classrooms, we need to provide a safe and healthy environment for our children. I don't know about you, but my heating bill was $1,000 last month. You know, I kind of agree with you on that. Uh, well, uh, I have a $600 bill last month. We need to caucus. Fine. We'll be in Ms. Fox's office when you're ready. Just call us. Wow, I already blew it, didn't I? Don't worry, Monique. We'll work through it. Just remember that if you have a question, write it on a note, pass it to me, and then we'll discuss it in caucus. Yeah, you're right. I didn't know that the heat was included in the budget. You know, we need to present a united front to management. They're not going to move any more off their position. They're stuck where they're at unless we change the playing field a little bit. This is going to be a tough round of negotiations. There's just no two ways about it. We need to escalate the activities and get our members involved. I think we need to get a hold of the contract campaign team, and we need to let them know what we're facing and what we're up against. Let's plan and mobilize. After looking over your proposal, the board has given us authorization to go ahead and move forward. We believe we have uh, prepared a proposal that you're going to find very acceptable. Adam, if you wouldn't mind passing those down to the rest of the team. I'd like Ms. Fox to review the proposal with you. 
Well, we had an opportunity to look over your budget analysis, and we did find some things that were overlooked, but we still don't agree on some other things. But we did find that we incorrectly included the classified managers, supervisors, and confidential. So that causes a budget adjustment. And based on that calculation, then we'll be able to offer you what we think, as Jennifer said, a proposal that will, from my interest, protect our ending balance and protect our reserve. So we are within our 3%. It makes the board happy, and hopefully it'll make you happy. And now that you've all had a chance to look over the proposal, the board wanted to, us to let CSCA know that they have recognized the actions your members have taken recently. For example, as you know, our board meetings aren't well attended, but last month you had the board meeting filled to capacity. All your members were there and they were wearing the same shirts, same color. The board did take notice. Management has also noticed that your members are wearing similar buttons that you're wearing today. They have signs on their cars and they're wearing blue shirts on negotiation days. We recognize all of these actions. And the board wants to make sure that we foster a good relationship with labor and management. So with that being said, we hope that we can continue, can continue to do just that. We hope that this proposal will be adequate and something that can be agreed upon by everyone. Thank you for this proposal. I think that we could actually come to some terms with this. We'd like to go into a caucus now. Sure, no problem. We'll be in Ms. Fox's office, so just give us a call when you're ready.